how's everybody doing this is 50 pips rocking and rolling here 4th of October 2015 not making any trade calls or recommendations because you and only you are responsible for the trades you may decide to take in fact if you're listening to this means you're ready to understand you accept all the scholars on the blog understanding that we're just performing some technical analysis in a learning context for educational purposes only so what's going on what's going on what's going on we're heading up into a actually pretty interesting week from uh, from the data side right so we should have a steady flow of stuff pretty much every single day so we're going to kick off the week um, we've got basically still china bank holiday but what's going to be interesting is we're going to have you know cable and euro gpb are very interesting points we've got those services pmi so out on uh, on monday out of the uk we've also got the ism out of the us and we also have some uh, business confidence data out of new zealand then on tuesday we've got a rate decision so central banks on deck so we've got the uh, rba with a rate statement and uh you know uh rate decision so that's going to be very very interesting we got some more uh, you know uk and uh, and uh euro data with draghi speaking and also we've got um, a monetary policy statement out of Japan with a press conference out of Japan going into that Wednesday. Uh, we've got more UK data. We got building permits out of Canada. On Thursday, we've got a bunch of uh, stuff with the BOE. So basically we've got rates out uh, and uh, some other uh, minutes out. We've got um, BOE Carney speaking later on in the day. We got FOMC minutes on Thursday. Friday, we've got all that employment data out of Canada. So again, you know, it's going to be a pretty uh, busy week, you know, fairly steady flow of data th pretty much every single day with a couple of central banks on the wire. So again, it's going to be interesting to see uh, what happens. I mean, in terms of levels, I mean, we've got a couple of interesting things, you know, on gold, no big change on gold. We're pretty much stuck here. Uh, as we said, our outlook was for a move back into the 1150s, 1150s attracting. So the range is still 1200, 1150, 1100. Our outlook is that we've put in a short term bottom. We're going to move back into the 12, 1150s. And if we can close above, we expect to see a move back into the 1200s. But a lot of choppy action around the 1150. That pretty much ties out with what's going on on silver. Silver, we're looking for a move back into the 15 and daily close above. We're still inside this choppy low end of the range, but our outlook remains for 16 attracting daily close above. Then that will shift back into the 18s but we're looking for a move back higher in terms of crude also very similar story we're looking for crude to base here around the 45 and we're looking for the 50s to attract you can go back on all the other videos we've talked about this in detail but our outlook is still higher now in terms of the es what's going on on the es now we have to you know we put in a fairly um, aggressive or bullish uh weekly close here right so a lot of different scenarios here you know our outlook when everybody was starting to get bearish towards the end of september we said you know we've been bearish for a long time we wouldn't be surprised to see a little bounce and then some kind of downside action so clearly this is what what it's looking like you know are we going to get this little bounce back into the 2000 and then sell off or rotate back higher but in any case that 2000 is going to be the pivotal level Right. If you look at that chart, you know, we're pretty much as we discussed, you know, all about these lows, uh, 1950 mid range, 12,000 attracting. This was a very, very nice uh, sell zone. Now, as much as it looks like the bears had things under control right now, this is a very aggressive test and we'll have to see how this opens. But keep in mind that. You know, we could see some very aggressive action or what we'd call velocity of move inside range. And, you know, after all, we're still stuck in this uh, 2000, 1950, 1900. But keep in mind that if we do get a daily close back above the 2000, then that's probably going to not look too hot for the bears, right? If we get a daily close above that, I would not be surprised to see a very aggressive move all the way back into the 2050s potentially all the way back into this area into the 21s so this is really a bull bear line for the week so as far as we're going into um into the week what we would say is from the daily point 1950 we're still inside this range 2000 1950 1900 uh expect bears to try and be active and cap this below this 2000 but if we get a daily close back above this 2000 then we could see a very very aggressive move higher Okay, so 
what is going on on Forex land. So we've got a couple of interesting developments. I think one of the most interesting ones is what's going on on Aussie, right? So our outlook hasn't changed. We looked at this double bottom here in the 9650s as a base and we said no matter what happens here after this base and attempt to rally as long as we don't get a daily close below 6900 our outlook is bullish for rotation back into the 72s 7250s right here it looks like it's getting some traction right and basically um, daily closes above here you know into the 70s into the 7050s are still going to be bullish now keep in mind don't be surprised to see a lot of chop into that rate decision and it's probably all going to be about that rate decision so expect to see some whippy action we'll have to see how things settle even after the rate decision you know any weakness that doesn't close back below the 69 we consider that still possibly a buying opportunity and we'll have to wait and see but right now it looks like a lot of choppy around these 70s but clearly it looks to us like we're getting these 72 72 50s attracting that's pretty much uh, in line with uh, what we talked about on kiwi dollar right our uh, our assumption was here that this breakout of this range was a rotation back higher to try and move back into the 65s we'll have to see what happens here now keep in mind that broadly speaking we're still stuck in this big range we put in right on that scare day whatever you want to call it but basically as long as we stay inside that range it's very tricky for this to really get traction unless we close outside and by outside you know what we would mean is you know we'd have to uh, close outside this uh, these highs or these lows right from a daily close perspective so as long as we're here we could see a lot of whippy action but in line with what's happening on Aussie 2 it looks like the um, the rotation is higher now there may be some sell opportunities on failures here but you know going into the week we call this 65 the bull bear line either for a move back down or a continuation of rotation back up now you can see here the way this is looking it's just looking like the dollar is is, is selling off a little bit um, I think uh, we would expect to see this uh, sell off more aggressively against the commodity currencies than necessarily against the euro right um, another um, uh, as we're talking about commodity currencies, you know, what we are looking at on CAD, and we've talked about this, you know, this failure to hold above these 34s, right, and this move back below, we expect this to be a short-term top, and we're looking for move all the way back into the 31s, sorry, we're looking back into this support, into the 33, the 32s, and the 31s, right, so basically all the way back into this ping-pong zone we'd looked at a lot now from a bigger picture of the chart we also posted on the on the blog as we said heads up you know because these 32s are really important you know daily closes below and this downside is going to attract now you have to respect this uh, oops you have to respect this daily candle you have to respect the fact that the bids were coming here and now we might get a lot of choppy action but if this holds heavy if we continue to close below the 32s right we would not be surprised to see this try and make its way all the way back down into the 28 128s possibly 125s all the way back into those two moving averages this is a 50 this is 100 this is the 200 on the, all our daily charts uh, green 50 gray 100 black 200 okay and then we had another a couple of interesting uh, charts we posted on blog you saw usd mexico very uh nice defense here you know this daily close paid quite nicely this daily close is paying back nicely you know we still expect this lower end of the range to which to attract uh very very nice uh very very nice action as far as yen is concerned and we posted this chart on the blog yen is quite interesting because it's all about this range right and with what we call is the 120 uh, 120 is really just the magnet light that's always attracting we put in this big aggressive day and then you see what happened we pressed up failure at highs and we came all the way right back down into this 120 magnet attracting then we we chopped around for a while we took a little fake at at lows everybody getting excited bam here you had that nice one hour negative close at highs move back to the opposite side of the range here you've got a positive close on a false break of the range and bam straight away into the magnet zone right so this could all possibly come all the way back into those highs but it's still stuck in this range so the only thing i would say is as long as you don't get a clear break outside this range i'd be very very cautious trying to play for continuation so it's just choppy 
Now, if you look at the other chart we've been looking at, right, and you just see is that it's so it's so whippy around this 120. The only thing I would say is that if this is going to stay, uh, you know, anchored around this 120, or if we're going to get any kind of upside momo, you'd, you'd expect this to start closing close to this level. Now, if we start to continue to get daily closes below the 120, or even lower to any of these previous days here, you see all these wicks supporting, then this could possibly sell off very, very aggressively. And I think that's what most people are gonna be looking for this week, right? Are we going to go back neutral on this uh, on this trade? And are we gonna see some dollar strength persisting or are we gonna see dollar weakness all, all around? And most likely that will be manifested through USD JPY going down, you know, those commodity currencies continuing to to, to appreciate against the dollar, right? That's going to be the uh, the most interesting thing, the most interesting dynamic to keep an eye out for as far as we're concerned. You know, Euro GPB, we're still stuck in this ping pong zone. It's not going anywhere, right? Um, there have been a lot of interesting, choppy action, a lot of interesting opportunities. I mean, if you look at it even from a four hour or a one hour, you know, it's all about these highs. And you see there being a lot of selling opportunities here with price not being able to hold above these highs for moves back lower. But keep in mind that we still structurally bearish on this and it's still, broadly speaking, stuck inside this uh, chop range. And as long as it doesn't start to close below here, still holding fairly, fairly uh, heavy, right? Uh, what's going on on euro and basically euro it's stuck inside a range in mid zone which is not that interesting a lot of selling opportunities into these highs just to keep on fading it what we were talking about you know as long as we get daily closes below here we'd expect it to come right back down and test these lows right if we get daily closes back above you know these uh, 1330s 1350s then we would not be surprised to see this go back and try and test the 15, 115 mark but as long as we keep on closing there you know downsides attracting right now it just looks like we're getting a lot of selling into the 13 and buying ahead of uh, sorry selling ahead of the 113 and buying ahead of the 111 you know globally speaking not an awful lot happening uh, a lot of uh, chop and um, you know not surprising all in all keeping in mind uh, the action but that's pretty much where we're standing and if you look at it from a bigger picture you see it's still heavy we uh i think we discussed it last week too you know we're selling to any rally here we expect this to stay anchored to this mid-range we'll have to see what happens now in terms of cable also one thing which is fairly interesting here um the fact that um we couldn't get any traction off those lows right uh, we talked about all this trading around the 5130s and 5160s, and we talked about how, how basically the fact that market couldn't hold a bid, uh, couldn't hold a, a selling pressure below this area made us think that we were going to rotate back higher, right? And basically, you know, that's pretty much where where we are. We're stuck in a in a situation where. We're in a support zone, and as long as it doesn't close below, you know, most likely we could see a nice little move back into the 153s, 153.50s, all the way inside that range. If it ends up coming back into these two moving averages, be much to do about nothing, a lot of choppy action in the middle of the range. But right now, it looks like we may be getting a little bounce, right? So that's pretty much what we're looking at for this week. I, I, I grouped the videos back up into a one. Uh, I tried it doing in twos just to see if we could get them out earlier. People tend to prefer the single video. So again, keep in mind the message is there's an awful lot of steady flow pretty much throughout the whole week uh, out of everywhere, right? Uh, we got that we got the RBA on the wires. We got a lot of stuff out of the UK. We got stuff out of Europe. We got a lot of stuff out of uh, out of the US. Uh, we also have those um, FOMC minutes. We've got Carney speaking. We're going to have Draghi speaking. So again, it could be very whippy. But what's interesting is that we've got a fairly steady flow throughout the whole week. So that should be interesting. And most likely the relationship to keep an eye out for is, you know, is the ES going to catch a bid? Is it going to manage to break through that 2000, right, and try and rally back on? Or are the sellers going to be back in? And are we going to get back into some kind of risk off and, you know, taking that to the currency side you know is the dollar going to catch a bid or are we going to continue to see um, more selling of uh, of uh, of the dollar squaring of some of those long dollar positions after what we saw happening last week okay guys i hope you enjoy the uh the 
the outlook thanks for sharing thanks for uh for liking it guys and uh as always see you guys for london open have an awesome one take care